Ryan and I are making our way down the channel. We happen to spot an osprey nest. Ryan, what can you tell me about osprey? Well, ospreys are really special birds in that they were endangered for quite some time and they're starting to come back. And them coming back is a good sign of a healthy and clean environment, so clean waters and whatnot. These birds are fishermen. They dive down, they fish, and they also make, as you can see, massive nests, huge nests with big, heavy pieces of sticks. These are big working birds, and actually this nest here is kind of uh, unique in that it has some babies in it and a mother bird in there protecting. And so she has this large area. They like to make their nests really high up in a large area, so on a rock, faces, or little islands like this, um, so that they can scout for prey and they can uh, look out for predators. So it's a really special bird and great find to see out here on the channel. Now there's a lot of boats passing back and forth. Does that disturb them at all? Well, they come accustomed to the noise levels of surroundings, but I wouldn't suggest that you hop off your boat and start rattling the pole or try to get a better look. So it's great if you could bring along some binoculars, not only as safety equipment for your boat, but so you can get a better look at these animals out in the water. We're just outside of the Perry Sound Marina here, and we've come across the Coast Guard Station. Yeah. Now, a lot of people at home watching are going to have the misconception that the Coast Guard is just here to rescue us, and that's not true. They do a whole lot more. That's true. They, they do perform rescues, but they also uh, you know, maintain the aids to navigation out in the waterways, all throughout yeah. the green markers and red markers. They also, in the wintertime, they uh, do the ice breaking on the waterways, keep the waterways open. Okay. And, uh, you know, in terms of prevention, they are taking the active role in terms of uh, having the Office of Boating Safety, which promotes boating education and boaters to prevent some of the incidents that occur out there. We include their safe boating guide manual in our safety kit. Yep. And people can read up on the different uh, you know, requirements for their vessel, the different types of vessels and the lengths, um, the safe boating equipment that they require on their vessel. Yeah. Sounds like a really good partnership. It is. Tell me how this valley was carved out by the Wisconsin Glacier. The meltwaters from the last ice age helped to carve out the steep river valley that you see today. It's about a 25 meter steep ravine and it has quite a winding nature to it. So there's areas where sun hits the steep ravine at different angles. So on some areas there's wildflowers growing while other areas are still covered by snow. Now visitors to Bronte Creek Provincial Park nowadays use it for recreational purposes. But historically, it was actually an industrial area. That's right. There's evidence of lumbering in the area, and the water, the creek, would have been used to help move the lumber down to the lumbering mills. And there's also a, a brick kiln. And so the clay from the ravine, there's a Queenston shale, and the clay would have been used in the uh, making of bricks that are now seen in some of the farmhouses on the property. As we were hiking up here to the lookout, I noticed on the side of the trail there was quite a few trilliums. Yes, there's an area of the park known as the Trillium Trail, which is known for its carpeted effect with the white trillium. 